Hey guys, I'm Eric, you're watching Notes and Nerds, and I'm here with Keith the Critic, and we're doing movie reviews. Hi! for Notes and Nerds, as you can see over here. And uh, also we're going to be doing some new merchandise coming out soon with the new logos and stuff, because I'm doing away with the uh, hand gestures that used to be on there, going to something a little different. Yeah. A little, little more basic. Uh, yeah. So uh, another thing is next week, I'm going to jump in on doing a quick review uh, next week, not this week, because i got to catch up. Doom Patrol Season 2 is out, and I want to talk about that. And a couple other shows that I've been watching, such as the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., how it's been going, and yeah, yeah. more about Stargirl. So, but this week, we're going to definitely hit the, up the stuff you're watching. So let's go ahead yeah. and talk about your movie reviews. What, up, what uh, is up first? Okay, first is Vampires, directed by the great John Carpenter. And I'm telling you, this, uh, it's, it's about a group of vampire killers led by uh, Jack Crow, played by uh, the great James Wood. And also um, him and his guys uh, attack a band of vampires. They kill them all. And then all of a sudden um, they come in and they start partying at a hotel, James Wood and all the guys. And so anyways, so I think that uh, uh, T uh, uh, vampire, uh, Delec Delecki, played by the great uh, uh, Charles Ian Griffith. Uh, um, he, I think he's one of the best vampires I've ever seen. And uh, va Master Vampire, sorry. And I thought he was very good in this movie. And I think that, uh, so he comes in, the vampire, and kills everybody but James Woods and uh, um, and then uh, 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 Daniel Baldwin, and then um, they kill everybody because uh, everybody is killed. And then all of a sudden, there's a, a victim, and and played by Cheryl Lee, and who stars in Twin Peaks. And I got to mention that because I love Twin Peaks. But anyways, um, so they go in and. So they kidnap, um, so James Woods and uh, Daniel Baldwin, they take Sarah Lee to a hotel where nobody can find them after everybody is killed by the vampire. Thomas, uh, uh, yeah, so anyways, I thought this movie was great. I, I, um, I'm, I think that John Carpenter is a fantastic director and uh, he wrote this. Uh, and he great direction, and he does all the music because like he does all the music for all of his movies. And I thought this movie was excellent. And um, um, uh, like I said, uh, Thomas uh, Ian Griffin I think is one of the best vampires that I've ever seen. And you know, besides Christopher Lee and of course the great Bela Lugosi, and then. Uh, but I thought he was very good in this movie. And I gave this, uh, I highly recommend you watch this movie and you can pick it up. Uh, I think on, uh, on, on, see, I can't remember where you can pick this up. I think on uh, Hulu, sorry. Okay. Yeah, on Hulu. And also you can pick it up on, um, on YouTube too. So, but yeah, also out there somewhere you can always find these movies <laughs> yeah yeah there's always you can. somebody who's yeah. illegally uploading to youtube we're not yeah. condoning that activity but yeah. yeah 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 but i tell you what this movie is excellent um um it was it's quick moving um this is an older exciting. one too right huh this is an older film from way yeah, it back, came out isn't it? about geez long yeah probably at least uh 10 years ago oh no god See, probably 20 years ago it came out. 
I, I, I want to say I remember seeing the uh, VHS for this at the yes. rental store I had here in Fall City. And that store hasn't been around for at least a good 20 years or so. So yes. I think it was, this is an old VHS. Yeah. This is back in the heyday of John Carpenter and his uh, Yes. And I tell, you, I tell you what, man, um, like I said before, John Carpenter is just a genius. Oh, yeah. And, and then, you know, he's, he's a great writer and he does great music. You know, it's just, he does everything. And, and I really... Like we talked about uh, him directed Roddy Piper last week, and yeah. and but he does a great job. He can act, he can direct any actor. Oh, he yeah. direct, you know. But I tell you what, and I I recommend you guys watch this movie. I just bought it last week on uh, on uh, the deluxe Blu-ray digital and all that, and I picked that up last week at Vintage Stock, and I tell you what, uh, it's got all the great additives in it and all that. Just watch this movie. It's highly recommended. So Definitely. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead. What is your next film that you got for us? Uh, the next one is Over the Top. Okay. Starring Sylvester Stallone, and he's an arm wrestling. Uh, he's oh. a truck driver, and he's an arm wrestling champion. <laughs> I remember this movie. This is an old film from, yes, I want to yeah, say, the it, 90s and, again. And you know what, though, man? I saw it. That was the last movie I saw at the downtown theater, the Dickinson, long time ago. And that's the last movie. And, and then they closed it down because I went to see that. And, I, yeah, okay, bottom line, I miss the old theaters. Those oh, are yeah. just classic theaters and all that, but we won't Sticky get it. We'll talk, we'll, we'll talk about all that later. Yeah, and when we, but um, so Susan Blakely, who plays his uh, his ex wife, she has she dies of cancer and all that. So uh, Rob, the evil um, Robert Loggia, who plays the uh, the evil, he's a great actor though, plays the evil father in law. And and so so he goes to Las Vegas and he he um, he wins it and all that stuff and I tell you what um, this movie is something that you need to watch check your mind out of the door like I said before oh, and just enjoy it it has Sylvester Stallone in it man and Robert Loggia is great now. The guy who plays uh, his son, played by David Mentalhall, uh, he's a headache to watch. <laughs> I was just like, okay, can't they find some other actor who can actually act? <laughs> well, again, we're talking late 80s, early 90s. I, believe, I can't remember the exact time this film came out. And yes. it, you, got, you get, when you spend all of your money on somebody like Sylvester Stallone, you kind of end up in a position where... You take what you get to fill in the other roles, so to speak. I know. And how how old was the son, the character that played by the son? Uh, he was like, uh, I think he was 11 or something like that. 11 years old. David Mentalhall. And I don't think, I haven't watched him in anything else that's been decent. So. There are some people that they just fit the role just enough, just well enough. Of course, child actors, I remember back in the late 80s and throughout the 90s, child actors, oh, yeah. there was a big issue going on with that stuff. So a lot of them were being exploited. Like Macaulay Culkin's uh, backstory, it was starting to become known about the ridicule and the hardships that a lot of children actors were going through. So when movies like that would come out, you kind of got what you could get because I know a lot of parents were locking down their kids, so to speak. Yeah, I know, I know, but oh, I, you know, like I said before, this this movie is fun to watch. Like I said, I went and watched it uh, when it came in. I think it was nineteen eighty six or something like that, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> but, oh yeah, um, and yeah, you know, I went into that movie and I thought, hey, it has Sylvester Stallone? I love Sylvester Stallone, and you know, 
I, like I said, I, I didn't, this didn't make any sense, but he's an arm wrestling champion who's also a truck driver. Come on. <laughs> Is there anything better than that? I don't of think so. Of course not. It was the 80s. What do you expect? Yeah. So, but anyways, I would check this out. And um, it's on uh, it's on Hulu, of course. It's of course. on uh, wait a minute. It's on uh, YouTube. Sorry. And you know what? I this movie's just fun to watch. And check him out. Like I said, check him out at the door. Uh, the strip ain't that good, but it has Sylvester Stallone in it. So come on, that's I've good. seen worse. I do remember this film. I've seen worse. It's just oh, yes. a, it's, a, it's a goofy, fun kind of yes. early bonding father son style cross country. Exactly, story, so exactly. Ex- except the kid actor, it, but he's he's bad. But you know, and Robert <laughs> Loggia, gems. and Robert Robert Loggia, he's in so many great movies and all that. And I thought, man, he plays a great evil guy. Usually, he plays an evil guy, you know, oh, but. Yeah. You know, but you know what? He was great in his part too, and then he at the very end, you know, yeah, you know, it all turns out perfectly. So there you go. So yeah. All right, let's go ahead and move on to your next choice for us. Okay, the devil wear the uh, excuse me, the, the devil, devil wears, wears Prada. Prada. <laughs> Stylish. It's, yeah, it stars uh, Meryl Streep, and she plays uh, uh, Miranda Priestly. Who's uh, who's uh, it's her own story and all that. Meryl Streep uh, plays this uh, part perfectly, and uh, so she hires um, she hires. Uh, there's three different people, and um, uh, and Anne Hathaway is one of the people that gets chosen, and she gets to be the assistant to her character. Uh, to Meryl Streep's uh, Amanda Priestley's character, and also Emily Blunt's in this too. And that's an early part, and she's good in I think anything she acts in. And but I thought this movie uh, is very good. I thought it was. Uh, she has to do all kinds of things for uh, for uh, Miranda, and yeah, she has to do stuff. She has to run all over the town. She has to do anything that she wants her to do. And Anne Hathaway is, uh, she gets a little bit closer to, to Miranda. Uh, and and um, after uh, Emily Blunt has her leg uh, broken, then she just, uh, Anne Hathaway takes kind of control and happen anything that Amanda Priestley wants done and all that stuff. Okay, I love this movie. It's a fun movie. I thought I thought the acting in this was very good. I thought that uh, uh, well done by Meryl Streep, and Meryl Streep is a genius at anything, any role she plays in. Oh yeah. And and then also I thought uh, 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 Anne Hathaway. She was tremendous in this movie. And also, Emily Blunt was very good in this movie as well. And had a lot of great talent in that film. Yes, I know. And I tell you what, I would watch this movie. Um, you can pick it up on uh, Netflix. And you can just, you can pick it up anywhere you want to pick it up. But I think that um, this movie is something that I like uh, three strong women in this part, and because Anne Hathaway isn't strong at the beginning, but as it moves on, she gets a lot stronger. Right. And you know, and I thought that um, um, uh, em, or, uh, Emily Blunt isn't so strong in the beginning because she gets stronger at the end. And of course, Mel Street playing uh, Amanda Priestley is strong because she's strong, playing a strong character. Oh yeah, and. I highly recommend you watch this movie, and uh, yeah, that it's. Uh, I thought it was one of the top films I saw that year, and I would highly recommend you watch it. It is terrific, and I highly recommend uh, you can watch that. Like I said, on on uh, Netflix and any other way you want to watch this movie, it's terrific. All righty. 
So let's go ahead. Uh, what's your fourth pick for us today? Okay, it's Hoosiers. Came out in 1986. Yeah, that's an old film. Yes. Wow, but, Gene Hackman, if I remember correctly. Yeah, correct. stars Gene Hackman and Barbara Hershey and Dennis, Hop Dennis Hopper. And I tell you what, uh, um, Gene Hackman hasn't coached a team in 10 years. So he starts coaching a high school basketball team in Indiana. And uh, and he has some trouble in the beginning because, you know, some uh, one of the kids uh, walks off the team. He doesn't want to play anymore because – and then also uh, he's trying to get another kid who's a talented basketball player, but he doesn't want to play because he said, well, I don't want to do this. So – and then also Dennis Hopper is great in this role as well. I thought that um, this took place in uh, 1954, long time ago. But I like the uh, uh, the story is excellent. Um, I thought the uh, Gene Hackman, Barbara Hersey, Dennis Hopper, and the kids who played the ball players are great as well. So I highly recommend that you watch this movie because this movie is something that you can watch it with your kids. No matter what age, you can watch it with your kids. It's a fu it's an entertaining movie. I thought that there's some uh, uh, there's some serious parts in this movie because uh, at the time Dennis Hopper is a, he's an alcoholic and he he comes back because his son is playing for the ball team and all that. And I thought you know this movie is something that you learn something from Gene Hackman who uh, uh, plays the coach in this, he learns so much about how to treat his kids because some issues happen in the beginning and all that. And then he came back and then he realized that I can't, I can't judge these kids, you know, you know, and it's, it's something that is a throwback. And I like the fact that Gene Hackman really played this role. Excellent. And I thought that um, that uh, Barbara Hershey was excellent in it as well. And I thought that this movie um, was uh, what you know one of the best film. I think it's the best bas basketball movie that I've ever seen. Oh yeah. So there you go. And I tell you what, I'd highly recommend uh, you pick this up on uh, YouTube. And uh, if you don't own it, uh, go out and buy. You can buy it for five dollars or whatever. It's you know, out there. Yeah, it's out there. But I'm telling you, man, this movie is excellent, and I highly recommend you watch it with your family. And you can just uh, – that's uh, a movie you can just uh, – you can sit down and talk about it afterwards. You know, this is a good, yep. comfor good conversation piece. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Yeah. So I highly recommend you watch uh, watch that movie. All right, so we're on to our last movie uh, choice. I've seen this one. I think it's one of the best superhero sci-fi movies I've yes. seen in a long time. Uh, this one was, oh, wow, this came out about six, seven years ago now? Uh, I think it was eight years ago, I think. About 2014, yeah. I want to say, is right yeah. around the time it came out. Yeah. That is Big Hero 6. Yes, and I'm telling you, this um, this movie is something I saw with my kids because you know because I back then I could take my kids to the to movies. I can't you know I can't do it anymore because you know, but, but anyways, I thought this movie was so well directed. I thought the acting was tremendous, and then there's. Uh, uh, there's the villains from outer space that come in. They want to take over the world and all that. And they have one guy uh, who's uh, played by uh, Big Hero Sick, Big Hero Six, sorry. And and his name is Betamax. Yeah, Betamax. And I thought that uh, it was a well-scripted story. Everybody knows what this movie's about. Oh, yeah. 
And I tell you what, and I thought, and there's no name, there's some name actors in this that had little bit parts, but uh, uh, Heroes played uh, very well by Ryan Potter. You don't know who he is, but you, re you recognize his voice because I was just like, God, this is really good voice. And I thought that uh, Scott, uh, uh, Addis, Scott, Scott Axit played uh, Big Hero 6, Beta Max, and I thought that he was good in it too. Oh, yeah. I thought the acting was in this, the special effects, how they looked and everything was outstanding. And I tell you what, I highly recommend that you sit down. You watched it. I watched it. Um, uh, all my kids love it. Um, I, this is such a good, such a good movie. And like I said before, you can sit down afterwards and you can talk about the movies, this yep. movie, because what? there's so many pointless, poignant parts in this movie that you don't, you know, that you watch and it's just like, this is very good. And what's the amusing thing is being a Disney film, it really kind of was part of that trend of breaking tropes that yes. Disney was so horrible with. You know, they would they would uh, stick to a certain style of filmmaking and yeah. storytelling that it was almost impossible for them to get away from. But here this film was where instead of a family member die, well, it was a family member, but it wasn't yeah. a parent. It was his, the older brother that he idolized. Yes. The villain was actually kind of relatable in a lot of ways. Yes. Um, even though he was, you know, your typical villain in the sense of taking advantage of people and doing stuff that was shady and underhanded. But I mean, overall, all the uh, additional characters, the, the uh, team itself, they broke tropes and introduced characters that were just so strong independently. Yes, because he, he assembles a team that goes after the villains. There oh, yeah. you go. You know. But I mean, every like the female characters were stronger characters. They weren't there just to be damsels in distress. Uh, some of the hero dudes were just goofy goofballs that had to, you know, they, they follow the trope in the sense of they had to answer the calling, so to speak. But overall, I mean, this was a fun film that a lot of people really got into, a lot of kids loved. And granted, it didn't follow the comic books from Marvel. No exactly but it they it was a lot of inspiration was drawn from those comics so regardless of being comic book accurate doesn't really it doesn't make, mean anything it doesn't really have to be comic book accurate for a good film because well kind of big hero six was really kind of like a very unknown comic book series it didn't last yeah. very long so yeah. but yeah that is an excellent film and definitely wor worth watching and i'm I it's Disney Plus, I think, is where it's at for right now. Yes, right? yes, it is. Yes. And I own it on Blu-ray and DVD because, you know, that's, you got to own a movie like that because you can take so much out of that movie. Just like uh, back when Ron Howard first did Splash, I saw him and Daryl Hannah and the rest of the cast talking about back then Disney was kind of a second tier company. And, you know, back in the day. Yeah. And so they came in and said, hey, we, Ron Howard, we want to make a movie called Splash. You know that. And then they didn't have, they finally uh, got them to do Flash, Splash, successful. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this movie was done by the new Disney, who has tons of money. And, but... I thought this movie was uh, so uh, probably probably the number three of the best uh, current Disney movies from the last like twenty years or something like that. I would it, put it in the top twenty for sure. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's, say it's one number, of their best best, but definitely it's up yeah. there. I mean, ever since uh, the Black Hole came out in the late seventies, yes. and from that point forward, Disney really pushed the envelope. Uh, in regards to where they wanted to be as a film production company. And then when we hit the late 90s and all the way up till today with like the movie like the Par uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and then yes. when they got Star Wars and all those, we've really seen a huge difference in the way they do films. So 
Excellent film, definitely. I like you. I recommend this for a lot of people. It's a great film. Oh yes, it, it is so good. And I yes, I, it's on uh, uh, Disney Plus. I mean, uh, it's worth watching, and you can watch it with everybody. There's oh, yeah. nobody who can't watch this movie because it's a great movie. Definitely. Bottom line, you know. All right. Well, that is your five movies for the week. And no TV shows, but like I said, next week we're going to be talking about a couple of stupid flies. You know, it's summer when the bugs are in your face. So I'm going to uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry? I'm going to pro- I'm going to get caught up on uh, the things we talked about. Oh yeah, the, definitely the, worth it. Of uh, HBO uh, slash Cinemax. Yeah. So, and I've already I I watched the Avengers or the. Uh, yeah, all the time. Agents so. of Shield. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna cut it up, uh, cut it short here. Uh, so, guys, uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Keith, for being here with me and talking about all these great films. And remember, guys, check those movies out. Not much news going on regarding uh, Slash and Bash Film Festival. Uh, again, that's going to be next year. Uh, when we get more details and we're ready to talk about that, we'll do that uh, down the road. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and also uh, be stay tuned because we got some surprises coming up in the and future. We all know you guys love surprises. All right, yes. guys. Well, Keith, thank you for tuning in with me and being a yeah, part of this you. week's episode, and we'll catch y'all later. Hey guys, if you want to help support Notes and Nerds, please go to our Patreon at Patreon.com/NotesNerds, where you can give a little to get a lot back. Tiers are only starting at just one whole dollar. If you also want to help support us by owning some of our personal merch, please go to shop.notesnerds.com where you can purchase anything you like, like t-shirts, stickers, posters, totes, and a whole lot more. Don't forget to go to all of our social medias at YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, where you can subscribe, follow, like, all that good stuff to keep up with what we're doing. Also, go to our website at www.notesnerds.com where you can check out our blog, you can check out our calendar for convention dates coming up, where we're going to be, what we're going to be doing, and all that good stuff. So, thank you, and tune in next time.